Okay, this is uh this is Brent Daniel again. Uh, I'm gonna update you and give you some uh, more information. The the reason the reason for all these motions on this housing on my illegal housing right now is because the day I became indicted, I became federal property, and I have now that I was indicted. I'm what you call Special pretrial detainee, and uh, the courts had signed a habeas corpus releasing me from the state system over to the fed system, therefore making me pretrial status. And with that comes uh, all the pretrial due process protections uh, and and uh, uh, right to legal visits and legal calls at all reasonable hours and uh you know be more available to my attorneys and then to me whereas uh being housed in a, a corrupt state prison under a federal contract that the marshals made with this prison it's on and i'm on prison uh convicted prison status it hinders my pre-trial status and my abilities to have that uh those uh, outlets of uh, legal calls and legal visits at all reasonable hours because the prison is not set up for a pretrial status. It's set up for post-conviction status, you know, uh, and I get one day a week preset for a legal visit. So, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And sometimes at one day a week, uh, that's preset for a legal visit is all booked up with other attorneys and their clients, you know, on a, on their post conviction stuff. Whereas if I was in the county jail or a pretrial detention center for a reals, I would have the ability to visit my attorneys or call my attorneys any day of the week at all business hours, or they would be able to visit me any time of the week at all business hours you know whereas here i get one day a week it's a thursday if i'm lucky and i get a legal call but my legal call is not confidential as i'm on the legal phone uh here it's in an office next to an office uh adjacent to it and the walls are so thin you can hear everything in that office and they can hear everything when i'm on my legal phone because they quote stuff to me that I told my attorneys afterwards. So I know they're hearing me. Now, uh, the prison, uh, state prison is for the convicted. Or me, I'm a federal pretrial detainee. I'm not convicted. You know, uh, when they did their indictment, they had to do a habeas corpus to, to remove me from the state system and put me in the federal system. And then they rehouse me back in the state system on a U.S. Marshal contract, and I'm the first. I'm the first one to ever go through this right here in California. They've never had a state prisoner get indicted to the feds and then be rehoused back in the state prison on their contract. That is the problem. So uh, the federal government, the feds have the power. Uh, fix the situation, but they don't. They have put me in this situation here in order to actively and willingly impede my fair trial rights and pretty much like, uh, you know, blackmail me into a false confession or blackmail me into a plea bargain or you know, playing with the constitutional rights stuff. And they have the power to just take me out of this system and put me where I belong, which is in a, a real pretrial detention, not a state prison. And, uh, but they don't. They're using it to their advantage in order to, uh, in order to impede my attorney visits and calls as I was 
clarifying earlier, the judge has the ultimate power in saying all the situation. And she is also the judge on the Coleman case. So she knows the corruption of CDC and the depth of the corruption. But she just sweeps it under the rug. I mean, when you got a system that has cracked open my legal mill five times illegally, and violated my rights, and not only violated my rights, violated her courtroom orders. And she didn't do nothing about it. You know, she swept it under the rug. It's like a kangaroo court. This is a kangaroo court situation with uh, federal government and the U.S. Marshals and the, the federal prosecutors are working in cahoots with CDC to, uh, to basically hang a motherfucker without a fair trial. Now, they say they have all this evidence and all that evidence, but I haven't been given nothing. You know? I haven't seen nothing. I haven't heard... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I haven't seen or heard nothing, and as a defendant in this case, fight the federal death penalty, it's like, uh, I have the right to see all of it and hear it all, and, and review it all, and participate fully. My attorneys are going to have to file a mitigation report without my knowledge of what's in it, you know? And it's like, uh, because of the date. The deadline date is the 25th of February. And so I just have to have blind trust, yet I can't even participate in the process. It's either file it or not, or just let them go in and give me the death penalty. You know, I have to uh, file a mitigation on it to show why that uh, I deserve to stay alive and I don't deserve the death penalty. And I'm blindly trusting these attorneys. And, uh, you know, because of the fact I can't even have a visit to review this stuff. So the marshals and the federal government have the power to remove me and put me in a federal detention center and, or Sacramento County Jail, Placer County Jail, wherever. Anywhere that's set up for a pre-trial status, as by law that I am. Uh, you know, this judge we have, she seems to turn a blind eye to corruption when it suits her fancy, you know? Eight months ago, well, back in June of last year at a court hearing, she told the prosecution, I can't just sweep all these violations under the rug. Well, eight months later, that's what she ultimately did. She swept the fact that my legal mail was getting cracked, uh, open in a mail room and being photocopied under the rug. So now we can't use the legal mail no more to mail specific documents, declarations, affidavits. Uh, to review my discovery or anything. And uh, she swept that under the rug. She basically swept my phone calls under the rug. And she said it's okay for me just to have a one-day visit that's preset every week. But I don't get it every week. It's something else with this judge. I think, you know, uh, but other than that, uh, whatever you can do to help, raise hell. I challenge you to pass this around to 10, 15 people. Let's get this to go viral. Everything in my life, all dynamics in my life, they use as a tool to try to break me. Everything. You can't break the unbreakable because I ain't breaking.